Broadcasting live from the HR Media Control Room here at UStreamRadio.com. Yours truly, Dabba K, joined uh, by Jay Jackson. What's going on, sir? What's going on with it? All right, all right. Um, You know, uh, the uh, song that just took us out, or brought us in, rather, um, was actually the first single uh, by Kwame, uh, the man we all know and love, the name of the song. But today we're going to talk about uh, Kwame, uh, the the rapper. Let um, me get confused with the politician, uh, but uh, Kwame, the rapper, um, and of course he had a uh, uh, brief popularity uh, between, uh, I would say, 89 uh, to the early 90s. What, what are your thoughts on, uh, your brief general thoughts on Kwame? Well, well, you know, back in 89, I, I got to admit, I was a big fan uh, when I first seen him come on the scene. This was back when uh, what, uh, Video Jukebox was out, when uh, we had to pay for our videos. Remember that time frame we had to pay for those videos to come on? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, you that. know, when it, you know, when he hit that scene and everything, he was a little bit different than, you know, uh, uh, than the kid in play and everything. You know, uh, his style, his whole swag and everything was just a little bit different and stuff. Hey, I enjoyed him. I was a big Kwame fan. Hey, I even had my polka dots on in my cameo with the uh, the guy inside of it. Now, I came from Right, right. <laughs> right. Um, now, um... Of course, uh, and I, got, I don't, I don't know, and I don't know if you knew this or not, but uh, at the time that his album was released, he was 16 years old, um, mm -hmm. and uh, so the the uh, debut album, uh, Kwame the Boy Genius, uh, featuring a new beginning, uh, was produced by uh, Kwame and uh, executive produced by Herbie Lovebug um, of uh, Salt and Pepper and. Uh, Kid in Play fame, among others. Um, at the time, he was one of the uh, first rappers to use a live band, uh, and the um, the album had the uh, single we just played, the the man we all know and love, and also the uh, big hit off of that was the rhythm. Um, and as you touched on, he uh, he he definitely was known for the uh, polka dots uh, in his costumes and uh, on his. Um, you know, designs and uh, just everything affiliated with him uh, in those early, early albums, uh, Polka Dot, Real Heavy. Um, and uh, it, it really, it really started a trend um, as uh, other people started to wear the Polka Dots. So uh, we talked off air about did, did uh, Kwame start the Polka Dots or did the Polka Dots um, uh, start Kwame? But uh, Kwame actually uh, kicked, kicked the uh, trend off. Um, and it just kind of just caught on after that, uh, as far as the hip hop hip hop fashion uh, goes. Um, so what you know, um, if you can remember back the uh, the feedback uh, from the, the polka dots, of course, that came from a generation before us. Uh, what, you know, what are your thoughts exactly on the polka dots? You know, it, it's funny that, that you touched on that because I was thinking the same thing we were talking about off air. Did he start the polka dot era or did he not start it? And, and you were right. He didn't start the polka dot era, but I would say he more so uh, pretty much brought it to the limelight as far as wearing it and uh, as far as the little bow ties, the little pocket scarves. And, you know, he just he kind of took it overboard. But, you know, pretty much I say that he was the one that uh, – <laughs> <laughs> you know, he the one that had it on, and everybody related the polka dots to him. So I would say he was more of a, uh, what's the word for it, um, a trendsetter when it came to the polka dots and weighing them and everything, because they wasn't too cool that much when they was out and stuff. Kind of like for old ladies and stuff like that, but he took it to another <laughs> level. <stuff like> that. <laughs> yeah, um uh, you know, uh, you know, you said that you were a fan of of Kwame, and, and as Definitely. I was as well. Um, do you do you think that um, do you think that he got uh, any negative feedback from some of the um, more hardcore uh, rappers uh, at the time? Well, you know, it's funny that you said that, right? Um, as 
as the hardcore rap came in, and we did talk about this a little bit off air, it kind of hurt uh, the whole uh, swag of Kwame and everything. Everybody went to what the Carhartts, the, uh, the Dickies, uh, Gangsta Bitch, and stuff like that was coming out. So that real type of hardcore era and NWA stuff was coming out, and it was really phasing him out and stuff. And when as time went on, you know, rap is like Biggie talking about your life is played out like the book of book of that, you know. They added on to it just to try to solidify how, you know, how out of um style Kwame he was and stuff like that. So I, I say it kind of hurt him a little bit uh, as far as artists, uh, if I would say that. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. Uh, and, and like you said, he was he was different from the um, the current, the, the rappers at that time. Um but uh, I want to go back to 1989 for a moment. Uh, in 1989, he was popping. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. He was, he was no definitely front. popping, and uh, absolutely the um, uh, second album that he released uh, in 1990 um, would definitely take him to his height. Uh, that album, that second album, was called "A Day in the Life: A Pokedelic yeah. Adventure," um, also produced by Kwame. Um, was released, and uh, what was interesting about this is it was a concept album about the day in the life of a high school student, okay? And uh, so the, the, the album had the hits, uh, One of the Big Boys and also Only You. Um, and uh, so definitely Only You uh, gets played today, um, you know, old school uh, sets oh, yeah. uh, and, and, and all of that kind of stuff. Um uh, so you know, d- definitely, I, w- I would definitely say only you, uh, his biggest hit. Uh, you care to speak on on that song, or whether you even agree that that was his biggest hit. You know, it's funny that you said that. With, with uh, Kwame, uh, Kanye West must got the sequel when he came out with the uh, college album. You know, because his album was coming out of high school, and Qu- uh, Kanye West picked up after <laughs> that. <and stuff>. Right, <laughs> right, right. But um, just to touch on that album and stuff, um. It was a real hot album. I like not only the album and the songs and stuff, uh, Kwame's style and everything was uh, very, very big and stuff like that. It was a time when music was fun. Uh, it was about dancing. It was about how you, uh, your outfits and how smooth and stuff. And it was, you know, bringing people from, um, you know, as crazy as it may sound, Cass was dressing up a little bit, symbolically. You know, uh, Cass was putting on slacks. It might have been different colored blazers and stuff, but, you know, Cass was really dressing up, dancing, having a good time, and that's when music was really about creativity and stuff like that. So I, I really was a Kwame fan, and that whole uh right there really brought me to the music point that I'm at right now. I, hey, big shots out there to Kwame, definitely. <laughs> um, but, uh, you, you know, and, and, I've, and I've spoken about it on other shows that uh, what – what happened is that um, I think a couple things happened. I think that you know going into that that change from the '80s to the '90s, um, mm-hmm. you know, there people were looking for uh, a different sound and a different a different vibe, and um, and I think that that is I think that's what happened. It didn't only happen to Kwame; it happened to other uh, other rappers as well. Um, and uh, you know him, him being so heavily, uh, heavily attached to the um, the polka dots and, and, and that whole movement. I think that, um, as you said, people started dressing up, uh, you know, wearing the um, the 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 shiny uh, shiny you know uh, dress shoes, mm-hmm. black ones, you know, with the buckles and, and like you said, dressing yeah. up and doing a little <laughs> bit of more of the casual look. And that and that was the style. That's that's what. Um, yeah. What a lot of people were doing, not all. Of course, you had you had the hoods that were that were yeah. dress, dressing a little bit different. Um, well, and, well, the uh, hoods couldn't get them type of clothes though, Dom. Keep in mind that was the ones that was. If you think about the whole era, right? Think about the club scene. You think about Kwame and the whole type of music they was bringing out. When you stepped up in the club, you had your dancers. They had the nice silk shirts on. They had the blazers on, the different colors. They was out to have a good time. And what did, what else did you have? You had your haters. They was on the wall. They, they might have had that car hard. They were sticking you up at the club. 
So a lot of these people right here, to me, <laughs> they was your they was your before the world was created. They was your new haters. They was in, in a making right there. And they <laughs> the, kind of, I was before haters. the world was created. Yeah, they was the haters. They was like oh the uh, the premature haters at the time before the world was created. You know, because uh, you know <laughs> that whole era was about fun, and you know it's funny because music now is coming back to that. I, I would say, uh, I would say it was kind of uh, before its time. I know you might say, "Oh, here we go with that," but uh, as far as bringing that type of you know that style, that trend, uh, uh, I would say Kwame was definitely before his time. I, I wish that he would have put a trademark on them polka dots, but hey, that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, and, and uh, definitely uh, to our people just tuning in, uh, UStreamRadio.com, uh, your truly Diamond K, joined by Jackson. We are talking about uh, Kwame, the uh, rapper. Kwame Holland um, is actually his full name. Um now, uh, what ended up happening, 1992, uh, transition, uh, also before, before, we, before we go, uh, um, Kwame is a cousin of Vin Diesel. Okay. Uh, so uh, I just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, Vin wow, Diesel. Wow, isn't that crazy? <laughs> yes, Kwame's cousin and, and uh, Vin Diesel danced in some of Kwame's early videos. Uh, so Vin Diesel <laughs> danced. Uh, you know, you got you can't just yeah. blow past that. Like, Vin, Vin Diesel. Vin, yes, he was dancing in Kwame videos back in the days before he became right. the person and he's cousins of Kwame. Wow, that's that's big news yes. right there. Yes, he was just <laughs> he's just a regular old dude. Um, uh, dancing around in the in, in the video it's kind of funny uh, if, you, if you really think about it. Um, in 1992, he released his third album, and that's Kwame, not Vin Diesel. Uh, released his third okay. album, which is called Nasty. Um, now, at at that point, uh, to uh, 1992, I'm sorry, Kwame was 18 years old, and uh, I guess he was getting he was starting to feel the flack uh, from the from the haters and mm. the uh, the um the hoods. Uh, the the uh, yeah. the movement was changing and it, and it was starting to get darker. The hip hop movement. This is 1992. You know, uh, you had like a brand new being coming up, and you had uh, like you said the car hearts mm -hmm. and um, everything backpack. was changing. Backpack, you know, mm -hmm. rap and uh, you know the the diggity diggity style. Uh, Dos facts. These bump these kidding, rappers kidding. coming up. Right, right, and, and so Kwame tried to change the image uh, by just writing the polka dots and writing more sexually charged lyrics uh, in contrast to his playful uh, previous songs. Um, so, you know, he, he got rid of the, the polka dots. Um, and, uh, but what happened is that uh, the... Like, and the album quickly fell from the charts. Um... The um and, and the spiral continued. Uh, in 1994, he released an album called Incognito, uh, which failed to chart at all. Uh, and yeah. then uh, he lost his deal and uh, fell fell out of sight. Um, and we're going to get into the next phase of his career in a moment. But uh, let's go back to '92. Uh, he started to change his style up um, and uh, dropped the polka dots. I guess. Uh, Polka dots were played out at that point. Uh, so yeah. he really had no choice, uh, I'm assuming. What, what are your thoughts on that? Well, at the time, like you said, he didn't have a choice. Uh, it would have been good if he did it before that time, before the whole entire ship went down. But like you, uh, we were talking about off the air, he kind of went down with that fashion trend. He, he attached right. himself too much to the fashion trend. And when the polka dots went out of style, he went out of style. No matter what he can do, he was typecast to that particular um, fashion. And it was a sad day, right. you know, but, you know, he picks back up. <laughs> right. And uh, it took a while, uh, 10 years. Uh, in 2002, Kwame reemerged as a music producer. 
uh, and he changed his name uh, to K1 Million, uh, also going by K Mill, um, and started doing production success at and worked with many artists L O Cool J, Mary J, Drew Hill. Um mm-hmm. in two thousand four he had major uh success as the uh, co producer with Eminem uh on Lloyd Banks uh hit song which was called On Fire and um oh, yeah. and he also produced for Will Smith uh and uh he works he works um steadily as a, a producer right now. Uh, but now he started using his uh, real name Kwame. Um, I, I think he should. I don't think he ever should have used K One Mill at all. I think he should have just stuck nah. with Kwame from the beginning. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, just, but uh, yeah, K One Mill, but, come on, Kwame. K One Mill, come on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Um, I don't know. <laughs> definitely, but uh, I, I definitely, I definitely think. Um, you know, does does Kwame go down as a one hit wonder? I would say. Uh, well, let me get your opinion on that first. Does, does Kwame go down as a one hit wonder uh, or not? <sighs> well, well, well. The thing is, based off the um, the charts, he would go down as a one hit wonder. But his style and who he was, as far as his character carried the mobile a little bit longer. So, I mean, I hate to say it, I'm a big Kwame fan, but yeah, he would go down as a one-hit wonder because uh, that one song was one of his biggest songs that charted. So, uh, that's what I got to say about it. <laughs> well, you know, I, I disagree. Um, but I, it's, it's damn close. <laughs> but I, I'm going to say that he doesn't go down as a one-hit wonder in my book because you know, I'm even even though it was not the smash smash record uh, that only you was. I still consider the rhythm to be a hit. Um, well, you you know the got, rhythm was to me. It was a street hit. I think it was a street hit because that's the one that really kind of broke it. That that's the one that was like yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. And, and you you know you mentioned the uh, jukebox and and uh, and mm-hmm. you know those type of video shows and and that song, especially the rhythm. Got a lot Ooh. of play on on those type. Got of, a lot uh, of money for my you know, mama. <laughs> those type of uh, yeah, you know I was video uh, 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 outlets. Um, so I, you know, I I can definitely understand. Whereas a lot of people may not remember the rhythm. Um, uh, upon just saying the name, but I think if you hear the song, if you're if you're in a certain age group, you will definitely remember the song. Um, so I, I, it's damn near close, but I, I think that he is. Uh, I think he's he's locked up a little bit, whereas though he can he can uh, shake the one hit wonder title off um, 